Here am I on the Somme working for Valor Canada, but this is a demonstration of what you should never ever do if you're fortunate enough to come to the Western Front. Never ever wander through a farmer's field. But this is a rather different day because Steve Benson, a British guy who comes from Cheshire, has spent a lot of time working with a local farmer, getting permission to mark out behind me a redoubt called Stuff Redoubt built by the Germans. And here I'm stood next to what becomes Cheshire Trench. And he's come out this morning with colleagues and marked out this defensive line. If you're ever lucky enough, I suppose, to come walking in a field on the Somme, what you'll find in a few minutes in most weather conditions is you get absolutely covered in mud. I mean, just look at my feet and legs. This is only about an hour of walking around on a dry day. So what this does, it allows us to imagine what it might have been like for a soldier on the Somme or a Passchendaele serving here in the middle of winter when it's pouring down with rain. This top layer of soil is basically clay. Below it, by the way, is a layer of chalk. But then imagine this, if you're here for five days, six days, or even you know, a, a full week, at the end of that time, you are filthy. And talking to veterans about their experiences, one of them, years and years ago, I was only 14 years old, and he probably wasn't much older than I am now, he told me, son, actually, if Suffolk, he said boy, when we went in the trenches, we had to start out with two clean hands. By the end of day one, you've got a clean hand and a dirty hand. I went, sorry, what do you mean? He went, well, you're given sheets of paper or you tear them up as toilet paper, but you're not able to have a wash. There's no washing water. There's no bathroom to go to. So what you have to do is basically wash as well as you can in your mess tin using the remains of the water from your tea or coffee. And you probably manage to do your face, have a shave, do your hands, but one hand is always dirtier than the other, at least while you're in the trenches. And he went on and he said, funnily enough, when they gave us fruit, we had the choice really, or no choice, but depends what came up, oranges and apples. And I went, which one did you prefer? And he said, I preferred oranges, but in the trenches, I liked an apple. I went, but, but why? He said, look, son, I told you already, you've got a clean hand, and a dirty hand. With an apple, you can eat it with one hand. With an orange, you need two hands. We kind of think of the horrors of trench warfare being being shot or blown up or gassed. How about just living in a hole in the ground in a field like this for five days in the middle of winter when you stink, when you haven't changed your underwear, when you've got a clean hand and a dirty hand, when you're stood in the trench in the dark and you know that your mate's next to you, not because you can see him, because you can smell him. That is one of the realities of war that we can't imagine. And actually, movies, great though they are, don't get anything near the true horrors of trench warfare.